Hello boys and girls, Mrs. Bailey here. Today's learning goal is I can explain and draw the three different Greek columns. So you are looking at my computer screen right now as if we were in school and I was going to show you a slideshow before we start our art project. So right now I'm going to go through this with you and we're gonna learn some really cool facts about some ancient history. And then we're gonna do an art lesson together. So here we go. All right, so um, here are the three different Greek columns, and we're going to take a look at what on earth I'm talking about. So here is a map of the country of Greece. Now, this is across the ocean. It's pretty far away. It's not right next door. It's not part of the United States. So to get a better idea about where Greece is and what it looks like, let's take a trip around the world do you remember when we were in school and we took a trip to africa and we took a trip to mexico well take a look at our world map again so here we are on google maps and we're seeing the world map right now we've been down here uh we went to mexico when we did the mexican alabrijes which were located in oaxaca mexico and then we went over here to Ghana when we were talking about kente cloth and now we're going to travel from East Syracuse Elementary all the way over here to Greece but first I know you're all missing East Syracuse Elementary School so let's just take a little view um, a, a little tour around because I know you all miss playing on the playground and you miss being there so let's just check it out let's walk around for a minute this is so cool it's Google Maps um, is really neat because you can get the street view at times. Um, you can really see things up close and personal. So here's here's where um, the front of the school is. And um, I can't wait to be back there with all of you, but it might be a little while still. So let's check this out. Let's go back over here. And I'm going to get some directions to go to the place that we're talking about. We want to go to the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. So I'm going to type in Parthenon. And it says that it will take 21 hours by flying on a plane to get there. There's no other options. We're not going to bike. We're not going to walk. We're not going to take a car or a bus. Um, so you're going to have to fly and it's going to take about 21 hours. It's going to be a pretty long flight. So if we zoom in to the actual Parthenon, and let's get the actual world view from satellites. So this is what it would um, look like if you were a satellite flying up in the air. Let's just click on this photo, and that way we'll be able to see some really interesting photos of the Parthenon, this ancient Greek building. I want you to take a look at these columns because that is what we're going to be focusing on today. I have two short videos to show you in a minute, and one is about the Parthenon itself, and the other is about the column. Do you see any differences in these columns right here from these columns right here? So just take note of that, and we'll talk about that again in a few minutes. So this is a really, really interesting building. Here it is up on a hill where it was built. You can see it from all around Greece. And there's a really, really cool view, and you can see how the city is built all the way around it. Now, because it is so old, it is, it is in ruins. It's not an active working structure by any means it's a it's a place to go visit and that's why you saw the scaffolding around it in that first picture because um they're fixing it and repairing it and making sure that it doesn't f get any um, further destruction to it so let's head back to the slideshow for a minute um so some cool facts about ancient greece are that they did invent a lot of really cool things. They were very, very intelligent people. Um, one of the things they invented was the Olympics. So the Olympics, um, the legend said they were founded by Heracles. That's not Hercules. That's a different guy, Heracles, in the year 776 BC. Think about that for a second. That was 
going on, not quite, but going on 3,000 years ago now. Um, so that was a long time ago that, that the Olympics have been going on, and they still are going on today. Inventions that they invented, um, one of them was a water mill, steam engine, and maps. Some other things that you would be familiar with, we, um, when we were at school, we have gym class in our gymnasium. That was also invented by the ancient Greeks. Another thing that was invented by them was the auditorium, places where we see plays and shows. So um, they invented some things that, that are very relevant to us today. This next little um, black right here says the city-state Sparta was well known for its strong army. And that was located in Greece. Spartan boys trained to become warriors from the age of seven years old. First of all, Spartans. That sounds familiar. Oh yeah, in ESM, we're the ESM Spartans. When you get to the middle and high school teams, you're going to be called the Spartans if you're on a sport team. So this is where that came from. Second of all, seven years old? Wait a minute, isn't that like a second grader? You mean the boys in second grade would be training to become warriors? Oh my goodness. Well, I would rather have you in art class than doing that, so I'm glad you're here. Ancient Greek pottery was decorated with scenes of soldiers, gods, and of daily life, as well as a lot of geometric patterns. So keep that in mind because next week we're going to be um, we're going to be discussing more of the Greek pottery next week. So there's some really cool things to look at next time. Finally, in this last section over here, I think my face is actually covering the slide right now. But the Parthenon, you just saw it, is a temple in Athens that was built to honor the goddess Athena, and it took around 15 years to build. So take a look at this video that I'm about to show you. All right, boys and girls, so we are about to watch a video about the Parthenon. So be looking at the architecture and the way the building was built and the columns. What type of columns do you see? In this episode, we are going to visit the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. First, let's see where Athens is on the map. The city of Athens is in the country of Greece. The Parthenon is an ancient Greek temple in the middle of Athens. You can see the Parthenon from all over the city because it is located atop a hill called the Acropolis. The Parthenon is one of the most famous Greek temples in the world and is considered the finest example of Greek architecture. It was built over 2,400 years ago in 438 BC. That's a really long time ago. And inside was a 40-foot tall statue of the goddess Athena, made of gold and ivory. Here's another fun fact I find very interesting about the Parthenon. There are some pretty neat designs in the construction. Mm -hmm. You see, the Parthenon is such a huge building that the curve of the earth would have made the shape look crooked. The roof would have looked droopy in the middle. The columns would have looked like they were leaning out. And it wouldn't have had mm -hmm. straight lines. So the builders were so smart, they designed the roof to curve in the middle and for the columns to lean in. It doesn't curve as much as you see here, but it is curved, and the result is a quite big, beautiful building that has lasted nearly 2,500 years. Wow! Well, that's all for this episode. I hope to see you soon in another edition of Tiki's Fun Facts. All right, so, um, so the the Parthenon is a very very interesting building, and it took a lot of hard work to build. But I really, what I really want you to notice about it today are its columns. So there are three different types of Greek columns, and before we do our art lesson, I really want you to understand the difference between each kind. So I have one more video to show you. And it's a girl who goes to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City and visits a real live column. And you can see how huge it is in this video.
and it's not even the full column. It would have been much, much taller when it was first built. So take a look at this and see if you can figure out what are the three types of columns? What are their names and what do they look like? and I'm 10 years old. <laughs> I'm standing in front of the Ionic Column from the Temple of Artemis at Sardis from the day of 300 BC. And this column was originally over 56 feet tall. It's huge. <laughs> if you come to the Metropolitan Museum, it would be very hard to miss seeing this column. Ancient Greek architects had three different types of columns named the Doric, the Ionic, and the Corinthian columns. The Doric had a simple design. On the top, it's very plain. It's kind of like a half circle in a way. The Ionic has scrolls on both sides of it. There's four spirals, two in the front and two in the back. It kind of looks like a pillow to me. Corinthian, I think, is decorative. Looks like an ornament. It looks like there's leaves coming out of it and then flowers in it, so it looks like a flower bush. They make me feel really small. <laughs> I like the Corinthian because in the Corinthian, you could find hidden flowers and leaves and types of designs, and it's made out of marble too, so it must be so hard to make such fine details. For dance, I've been practicing headstands, and when your feet are together and you could hold it, it looks so controlled, like a column, it's so controlled, and it's so strong. Columns are still used today in famous monuments around the world. I do think that people think they're beautiful today. This is Ella reporting from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Thank you, Ella. Thanks for watching. All right, so we are about to go make our very own column art. But first, I just want to quiz you. What type of column, column matches which name? So the very simple type of column. Which name was that? The Corinthian, the Doric, or the Ionic? If you were thinking Doric, you were correct. It is the Doric column that is the simplest column. Do you remember which type of column had the scrolls or the swirls on the edge? If you were thinking Ionic, you would be correct. It is the Ionic column. And of course, the one that's left is the Corinthian. It's the most fancy column with the most decoration around the edge and probably the most detailed and difficult one to make. It is called the Corinthian. So join me in our art lesson and stay tuned. Grab a piece of paper and some crayons or markers. If you have paint or a pencil or a pen, whatever it is that you have, I will be using a marker and crayon today. So here is an example of the project that we are going to be making. Can you identify the three different types of columns? We are about to draw them. So here's my piece of paper. I'm going to use a marker so you can see it. I would recommend beginning with pencil. So we're going to draw a line and another line for our first column. We're going to add a tiny little oval shape on top of our column. It's going to be the beginning of the decoration on the top of our column. We're going to draw our second column now before we add any decorations. Two more lines with another really skinny oval shape right on the top. I'm making them different heights. My third column is going to be taller again. I'll have two lines and one more skinny little oval on the top. You don't have to make yours different heights. I just wanted them that way. I think that it adds a little bit more interest to my design and that's why I did it. So here we go. We're going to begin our first column decorating it by adding another oval on top. Very skinny oval. 
now a little bit thicker oval, a little bit wider. This is going to be the most simple column, the Doric. Then we're going to put a rectangle on top of that. And that's, that's the top of our column. It's very simple and squared off. And that's what the Doric column looks like. There's not a lot of fancy designs to it or anything. So our second column we're going to do is the Ionic with the swirls on the side. We're going to start with a line up top. We're going to add a spiral line off of each side. There's our first spiral. Here comes our second spiral. Now we're just going to add a curved line right in between those two connecting them. Connect my line a little better there. Then we're going to add a couple of curved lines underneath, almost a U shape. They're slightly more decorative than the Doric. And that's why we added a few extra designs on there. And now comes the third column. The, oh, before we do that, let's add another rectangle on top there. That'll really finish that one off. Now here comes the Corinthian column. We're going to draw some little, some little leaf shapes, a row of leaf shapes. I'm going to put this little triangle with a little shape on the bottom of the triangle. So a little baby triangle with like a little U shape underneath it. And it ends up looking like a little leaf coming out of the column. A little triangle with a little U shape. I would put as many as it takes to get to the other side of the column. This is going to be the trickiest column to draw. It's even a little bit difficult for me. Now before we add another row of those leaf shapes, we're going to draw this circle. And this is just some added decoration to the column. They have a lot of different shapes and this is kind of, we're going to draw like a little heart in there. We're going to draw another line on each side. Now we're going to go back through and we're going to draw those little leaf shapes again with the triangle on top and the little U shape underneath. Little triangle on top, so maybe even like a little oval shape. Doesn't matter so much what shape it turns out to be, as long as there's a little, little oval or triangle on top and a little U shape on the bottom, and it'll look leaf like. It'll look Corinthian column like. It's tricky, so just to give it your best shot and do the best you can, and that's all I ask. Right now my leaves are looking a little bit crooked, but I'm going to go with it. All right, we're going to do some bigger shapes, bigger leaf-like shapes coming up. It's almost like a really tall, skinny, upside-down U. Upside-down U shape. Just a whole line of them, a whole row. And that's going to make our column a little bit taller. We're almost done with the trickiest part and now we have to cap off our column by drawing a line up here, another little tiny little skinny oval with a rectangle on top. Now if this were truly being built by the Greeks, it would be much straighter and more perfect than what I've drawn, drawn. But as I said before, this is even tricky for me. So I'm proud of you for even trying this right now and doing your best. We're going to go back through and we're going to add some flutes to our columns. It's just a really tall, skinny U shape. And then it comes back down. Then we're going back up and make another tall, skinny U shape and come back down. Then we're going to go, it's an upside down U shape, by the way. 
tall, skinny, upside down U shape. I fit four in mine. And it's okay, my lines aren't perfectly straight up and down, but that's all right. And I'm going to go through on my other two columns and do the same exact thing. Put in some really tall, skinny, upside down U shapes. Those are the flutes of the column. So if you are standing in front of a real column like the girl in the video was earlier, if you touch the column, you'd realize how much had been carved out of the column to make it the shapes and the lines as beautiful as they are. So these lines are representing an area that has been carved out of the column and really, oh, I'm going to add some lines up here too. Since it is the most decorative one, I'm going to add another leaf shape over there because that, that was just bothering me. It was a little lopsided. And now we have one more column to draw our flutes on. Tall, upside down, you really, really skinny. It's really just a line that curves at the top and comes back down. I was able to fit about four across in my columns but you may need five or you may need three, depending on how large or small that you draw them. And now our job is to color the background. You do not need to color your columns in because they stay white. They do not need to be colored, but the background would look really nice colored. So if you get a chance to do that, um, color the background, pick, a, pick whatever is your favorite color, doesn't matter what color, and don't forget to head on over to Flipgrid as soon as you finish. Make me a video so I can see your finished work. Otherwise, I'll have no idea what it looks like. Um, I would love for you to tell me one thing you learned about Greece or Greek columns or Greek art or the Parthenon or anything at all that you learned from making this artwork. Um, next week, I'm really excited because we're going to stick with our Greek theme and we're going to do a whole different project about Greece. So um, I can't wait for that and I can't wait to see your artwork finished. Have a good week, boys and girls.